everyone, it's Izzy here and today I am doing a Game of Thrones recap for Season 8 Episode 5, The Bells. So if you've not seen this episode, please exit out of this video now. You can click the I up there if you would like to see some of my other videos where I am not discussing Game of Thrones, I'm not discussing spoilers, so I highly, re highly recommend checking out those. Now let's get into this video. So I started writing out the stuff. I do this after the episode. Um, I just go to different websites and then things for my memory. But I was just like, there's so much that happened. I'm just going to use this article and that is through Entertainment Weekly if it will let me open. Okay, so I will have this article down below in the pinned comment if you would like to follow along with me. But this is the Game of Thrones recap recap in progress for season eight episode five queen of the ashes that's not the episode name but that is what the daenerys is now this i think this is the episode of game of thrones i've been the most shocked by which i know that may be like how well i knew the red wedding was gonna happen other shocking stuff i like the separate baylor blowing up i knew was gonna happen and um but this i didn't I didn't know what to expect for the episode tonight. I didn't go on Reddit all weekend because I didn't want any spoilers. So I just, I didn't go on Reddit at all. So I had no idea. I was like, Cersei's gonna die. That's all I thought. I thought Cersei was gonna die and she did. <laughs> and that reminds me, I have to go on my list and check off the people who died. Yeah, this one, the first line in this article was, this is the most consequential episode in Game of Thrones history. Yeah, very, very much so. Basically, this was like 9-11 hits medieval times. Like, I was, like, I don't, I don't have words really for it. It was so intense. I was anxious the whole episode. I was like on the edge of my seat. I couldn't even, I almost have a drink with me like all day. I couldn't even drink my drink. I was so nervous. Like, but okay, guys. So it's called the Bells, Hell's Bells. I could make a lot of song references for that title, um, Metallica, and just a lot of stuff. But we're not gonna do that because uh, the main song for this is that they played throughout the episode, and then in the credits is a coat of gold, a coat of red, a lion still has claws. And mine are long and sharp, my lord. It's long and sharp as yours. Yeah, there's my singing. <laughs> but yeah, um, just so much happened in this episode. Like, for this video is gonna be very hard for me, just putting my thoughts together and everything. But so much happened. This is far one of the best episodes of the show, the best one of the season, obviously, until next week. Uh, I, so I got my HBO Go account set up because I'm gonna be out of town on Sunday. And I am just so scared that it's not going to work. And hi, Fred, y'all can't see him, but he's sitting right there. Basically, for all of us who hate on the Battle of Winterfell saying it was overhyped and that it wasn't that great because like nobody died, they had the secret of an episode waiting. And I think Amelia Clark said this was the biggest episode like a few weeks ago I saw. And she said like to get the biggest TV and stop licking me, cat, please. Um, and yeah, I watched it on my TV. And then I watched it again after on my iPad. But okay, so yeah, Daenerys. Okay, here's what I was looking for. So the episode opens, we have Varys is sitting at his desk and he's like writing Jon Snow's um, not lineage, his parentage, his heritage on a scroll so people know that he is the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. And then um, this like girl comes in and it's like, she's not eating and her soldiers are watching me and all that. So I think that Varys was trying to poison Daenerys, that's who they were talking about. Um, again, we don't know for a fact, but I think so because he was like, we still can try and the greater the risk, the greater the reward or something like that. So I think he was trying to poison her and then have Jon Snow on the throne. But obviously um, Varys won't play a part in that really. 
when Jon Snow is coming to dragons so I didn't think he was originally going there I don't know if he went just because he heard um about Rhaegal and Sande and all that so I don't know if he was going just because of that or if he was going there regardless I don't really remember in the last episode what they said I just remember that he'd be marching south of Davos to King's Landing so Varys meets up with Jon and is like um when a Targaryen is born it's a coin flip of their map or not and he's like I am certain where you are just landed with Daenerys, not so sure. And John is like, I don't want it. There, there's John back there. He's like, I don't want it. I've never wanted it. Don't talk to me about this, basically. And we go to Daenerys and Tyrion. And Tyrion was like watching the whole John and Varys exchange. Um, so he he knows like what went down. He goes to Daenerys and he's like, so, or, I don't know if he says someone's betrayed you or if she's like, someone's betrayed me. I'm, I don't really remember. And then she was like, Jon Snow. And he was like, Varys. And she's like, it was still Jon Snow because he betrayed me. I begged him not to tell anybody, but he told Sansa. She told you, you told Varys. So, and she's like, and Sansa obviously does not want me on the throne. So yeah, so she is blaming Sansa basically for all of this and blaming Jon. But okay, so later we have Grey Worm comes and arrest Varys and Varys before Grey Worm comes and burns what he was writing. So I don't know if that was the same thing he was writing about Jon at the start of the episode, but I'm pretty sure and Fred. But then they take him and he gets burned alive and John just gives Danny a look. He's like, what the hell did you just do? Like he is shook. I, don't, I mean, I get it why he was shook, but yeah. Um, so later in the episode, Tyrion is like, don't, don't burn down King's Landing, don't attack, don't kill innocents. He's like, the bells will ring if they surrender. So please don't burn the city down if those bells are ringing. And again, the name of the episode is The Bells. The Bells play a huge part in this episode because it's between life and death kind of thing. It's like, okay, she does not, people say she agreed with him, but I didn't think that because she just kind of ignored him and told Grey Worm, you will know when to go once I get there. She's like, you, you will know. Um, so then Danny tells Tyrion that Jamie was caught trying to get past their lines. And so he goes, they go, I guess they're um, outside King's Landing. They, it's um, Tyrion, I, I think Tyrion was there. Davos and Jon um, and Grey Worm maybe um, go on a boat across to um, King's Landing. And he's like, um, Davos, you're the greatest smuggler ever, aren't you? And um, he, Tyrion gets the key and he goes to Jamie's tent where he is all chained up. Hey, that scene, I almost cried. I didn't cry at all in this episode, but it almost happened. They have a very sad exchange and it was obvious that they were gonna die. But um, Tyrion frees Jamie after Jamie freed him a few seasons back and he's telling him you have to get Cersei to surrender the city or tens of thousands of innocent people will die and Jamie's like your queen's gonna execute you for doing this and he's like one dwarf to tens of thousands of people um it doesn't really matter and that's just, oh my gosh and then Tyrion was thanking him for not treating him like a monster as a kid and Jamie was all he had as a kid growing up and I'm like my heart and all that they never see each other again alive at least so that happens that it's very very sad um so Tyrion now seems dead either way if he's marched into there and he'd have a child with Cersei she'd either kill him or would have perished in the attack but it's the name Jamie in this place Tyrion is committing treason yeah so now King's Landing see that was all under the Dragonstone title so that's why I was kind of confused I'm like I don't know if they were in King's Landing or if they were at Dragonstone but I, I guess it doesn't really matter so at King's Landing, Daenerys first goes and burns like the Iron Fleet, which is understandable. That is the army and this is a war. So armies go against each other. It's the Navy, but she's the Air Force. So that is completely okay. It's justified like she can do that. Um, she burns the scorpions. That those are the things that shoot the, um, at the dragons. So she goes and burns all those. And then she comes over to where the um, army is, the Unsullied. Um, the Northmen, the 
Knights of the Veil, all of them are. And she like burns down the wall and I was like, I was shook. I thought like you could hear the booms happening and I thought the um, wildfire underneath the city was blowing up and I would really be shook if that happened. So she goes over there. So in the Red Keep, Cersei's looking out at the city watching this happen and Kyburn is like, well, she's like, we just need one good shot and we can kill the dragon. And he's like, all the scorpions have been burned. She's like, Euron has killed one of her dragons before, he can do it again. And Kyburn's like, the whole Iron Fleet is burning. And she's like, our men um, will not betray us or something like that. And Kyburn's just like, okay lady. <laughs> Um, and she's like, the Red Keep has never fallen. It will not fall today. Whereas we get a standoff of Jon Snow, Grey Worm, and Davos with the Unsullied confronting the remaining Golden Company troops. Daniel and Drogon is perched on the city ramparts. Cersei start staring out from the Red, Red Keep, cries from people to ring the bells. And we know that Cersei's not going to ring the bells. Um, or at least... I, she doesn't have to make the decision because somebody just starts ringing the bells anyway. And then have Danny just looks mad because she's the mad queen. And she just goes and flies away. And everybody's like, what is she doing? And she just starts burning everybody, burning King's Landing, burning innocent people, burning down the Red Keep. And that's when John and Tyrion are like, oh my gosh, we have been supporting the wrong person. And I thought Grey Worm was about to kill John because Grey Worm got kind of mad in this episode too. And I was so scared. I was like, don't kill my man, John, or I'll come and get you. So we have all that happening with the multiple armies in the middle of the city. And of course my website had to like refresh and mess up and make me lose my spot. Yeah, so she's high on destruction and just goes and kills everybody a lot of people are like that they, they ruined her character arc i do not think so if we go back to season two when she's in the house of the undying there's the throne room we didn't know if it was snow or ashes or what so i do think they've known this is gonna happen since season two and that's obviously the very start of six seasons ago so i do personally think that her character has been going to this so uh, I don't get why people are saying they ruined her character arc. I think this is exactly what Danny was capable of doing. So we do have Clegane Bowl happens. Uh, well, first we have Arya and the Hound are going into the heap. And then he's like, girl, go back home. You don't need to be here. He's like, you're not going to make it out alive. And so Arya leaves and then he goes into the castle. He finds the mountain and the mountain's not listening to Cersei, he's not listening to Kyburn. He throws Kyburn to his death and Cersei is just like, I'm just gonna walk on by. So we have the Vain Bowl taking place and the mountain's like mask comes off and I'm like, Darth Vader. Then we have Arya's in the streets and getting trampled and this lady that we've been seeing throughout the episode helps her up. And then we have Cersei is reunited with Jamie, and they are going to get out of Dodge and go to Pentos. And so he's, um, they're going down to the dungeon, is it the dungeons where the dragons, um, dragon skulls are? So they are trying to go down there. And so Kalgamble, basically the mountain can't be killed, and the hound like pushes him out the window, and they both fall into the fires below and while all this is happening the red keep is getting burnt down just stuff is falling everywhere and it's bad and then we have before jamie and cersei jamie and euron get in a fight and he's like euron's like you can be a kingslayer two times and they'll sing tons of songs about you he does um die jamie kills him but he's like i'm the man who killed jamie lannister so jamie is stabbed on like both sides so that happens and Arya is just trying to help all these innocent people but the city is being burned down all around her but the cooking ball happened both of them died and then cersei and jamie get to the dungeon thing and the entrance is blocked and they cersei's like i don't want to die not like this and they're just holding each other and the whole castle comes falling down on them so that is an end to 
two very important characters in this show. I thought my theory was gonna happen where they, um, Jamie kills Cersei and then kills himself, but that didn't happen. That, that's been one of my theories. I have it in my books where I have, I, I mark all things that add to my possible theory that are, could be for my theories. I, um, that's one of the annotating things I do in my books. Arya, Arya almost died so many times. That's kind of annoying and shows when a character almost dies so many times, but it's part of it for plot material, I guess. And at the end, it's this, she's the only one living on the street and there is um, dead, burnt bodies everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and John's trying to get his men out of there and that happened earlier and he killed one of his own men who was trying to rape a woman and he told her to go and hide and i know my mind's everywhere i'm so sorry this is probably my worst recap ever but it's because i'm shook right now i'm still shook like however many hours 15 hours after the fact but yeah and so there's aria on a white horse and this is symbolism to a bible verse which i will put the tweet over there that i saw which is very interesting. Um, I like the symbolism. I think it's just really interesting to have that there. And yeah, so this episode is one of the best that has ever happened. So when I know I did a, poor, a really poor job of explaining it, but just so much happened and it's so hard to explain. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll still always comment, rate, and subscribe. And be back next week to see my recap of the final episode of Game of Thrones ever. Bye, guys!